Welcome everybody, this is uh, going to be another episode of Beyond the Band, and uh, you know, it's our continuing series to bring you the people that are uh, doing everything and anything that's behind what you see on stage or what you listen in your radio, on the record, the CD, any way you see it. There's millions and millions of other people behind the scenes that are making it possible for that artist or that band to be there. And uh, with us tonight is going to be Brent Porsche, and so we're going to sit down and talk to him in just a second. Um, so sit back, relax, learn something from uh, one of the more productive, friendly, and all that great guys in uh, Philadelphia Radio, uh, Brent Porsche. Hey, All right, so welcome, Brent, to the show. Um, happy to have you on as our third guest for Beyond the Band. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, so, you know, I want to jump right in. Uh, for people out there who don't know, you uh, you you work at WMMR. Congratulations on your uh, your new full time position. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so um, let's let's talk about that. How did you get involved? How did you start in uh, in in radio? What made you do it? Well, it's funny because when I was in high school, I was actually studying to be a marine biologist. I wanted to be a dolphin trainer. I wanted to work at Sea World. I wanted to, you know, be, still be in front of fans and a crowd but mm -hmm. like I was a swimmer growing up I love the beach I still love the beach and being near water and I kind of wanted to, to merge the two together and I was thinking I want to be a marine biologist but when I was in high school taking advanced chemistry and physics and all these classes I was failing miserably like I just don't do well with math and science and all that and it, it turns out my senior year when I'm kind of struggling as to what I'm gonna do next um, I had a few extra credits to take, and I took a, a TV production class with Dr. Benton, and it bit me so hard that, like, I knew that's what I wanted to do from there. And I learned it just on a whim. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, funny story is somebody in my physics class was a mobile DJ at the time, and he would do, like, backyard birthday parties, just very small events. And he kept asking me about uh, certain bands and music, because I, what I would do is on Sundays after I get done church, I would go home and I'd pop on, you know, Casey Kasem's Top 40 or Rick D's Weekly Top 40 and just, mm -hmm. you know, put my cassette in and just record all my favorite songs and just lay on my bed. And that's, you know, that's how I got to learn a lot of the music, you know, growing up in the 80s and you know, through the 90s. Um, but and this guy just kept asking me questions. Who sings this song? What, what album is it on? And I was just boom, 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 giving it back to him. He's like, you know a little bit about music. And I'm like, I guess I do. And uh, this is before I was going to concerts or anything like that. And uh, he's like, well, why don't you come on out with me to a, to a birthday party? We literally played a backyard birthday party show. And again, from there, it was fun to ha kind of have control over the environment and to kind of... Uh, you know, dictate the party, you know, go with the flow and, and play what you want. And I, I really love that aspect of it to the point where I started my own mobile DJ company. Sounds Good Entertainment, you get good sounds from Sounds Good. And from uh -huh. 2008 to, or I'm sorry, from 1998, uh, which was my senior year of high school to 2008, I had my own mobile company and I was Springfield High School's DJ. I was Millersville University's DJ, uh, you know, weddings, proms, you name it. I still have all my old equipment. And... Um, when I got to when I went to college, Millersville up in Lancaster, they were just in the process of building a brand new state of the art uh, communications building. Um, so one of the cool things with that was it wasn't ready when I got up to Millersville. So I got to learn on all of the old school techniques. I learned on vinyl. I learned on reel to reel how to, to splice the tape together, uh -huh. uh, carts and knobs as opposed to digital and faders and all that kind of stuff. So I I kind of feel as if I was the last of the old school taught DJs, you know, coming yeah. into it. And um, one of the other fortunate things about knowing what I wanted to do going right into college was that I was able to jump on all of those prerequisite classes. So then by the end of my college career, uh, you know, I was recording and mixing bands down to CD. I was um, part of the TV station. I was a cameraman, a technical director. Sometimes I hopped on camera, you know, and did some stuff there, did some news. Um, but just liked, loved everything about media and everything that had to do with it. But like, just for some reason, you know, Howard Stern was always a big idol of mine. Uh, Pierre Robert, also a huge idol of mine. And to be able to get to work with one of my idols, you know, on the same team, it's just, it's awesome. So, you know, obviously you get, you get finished uh, college and, uh, let's talk. You, you were working at one of the other radio stations. Yeah. 
And uh, how did you start your career there? What was one of your main jobs there? It was funny because uh, when I was out of college, um, you know, it's hard to get a job. Hard sure. to get a job in media, in radio, anything like that. Um, I was actually about to sign on to a door-to-door -door sales company down in Center City, Philadelphia. And granted, this was the middle of February. Um, and I remember being out and going door to door and trying to sell these vacation coupons to people that could barely even afford to go on vacation, let alone pay for these vacation coupons. And I remember coming back to the office and sitting there and everybody's like, oh, you did a great job today. And I was about to cry. Like, I was just like, this is not what I want to do. This is not what I'm meant to be. <laughs> and uh, my phone rang or I got a text from one of my friends that was actually doing promotions at B101 at the time. And she was just like, hey, there's a spot, you know, we'll, we'll set up an interview for you, da 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 And I went in, and it was, just, again, for promotion, street squad stuff, the, the ground pounders, which mm -hmm. is yeah, the first line of uh, the defense for uh, any radio station, news, news organization. And I'm like, sure, anything, you know, anything to get me out of what I'm currently doing. And I went in, and I, I sat with the promotions director, and during my interview, I was just like, look, you know, if I have to clean bathrooms around here. I just know that this is what I'm meant to be doing, this industry, to be in inside these walls. It was over at B101. And um, they're like, you know what, we like your attitude, come on. Before they even like officially hired me, they brought me down the hall and they brought me into the studio and instantly started training me how to board op and showing me the buttons and stuff like that. They just loved You're my passion your for you yeah, and the energy and all that. And uh, so I was eventually hired, my first job in radio, to be the B. I was the, I was the mascot for B101 uh, for the better part of a year. And within that time frame, though, within the first three months, um, I got my first on-air gig at B101. I was doing overnights on the weekends. I was working in the engineering department. Uh, I was basically, like, like I said to the promotions director, I was like, I, I just want to be here all the time. And I eventually was. I was working 18-hour days. I would do an overnight shift. And then I would go into the promotions room and I would sleep for maybe an hour and a half until, you know, seven, eight o'clock in the morning until I had to put the B costume on and go out and open up a Macy's or go to, you know, the Camden Aquarium, let a bunch of kids, you know, molest you in your B costume <laughs> and stuff. That, stories for another time. Trust yeah, me, yeah. stories for part two of this. We'll, we'll do it next time. Um, but again, with, with everybody that I worked with, they just, they saw the passion, they saw the drive and, and they were that much more eager to help me learn and to help me progress. So, uh, you know, all the jocks, all of the, the production people over at, at B101, like I can't thank them enough for, for what they had shown, showed me. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then eventually when, when we parted ways, I left to go, uh, to 105.7 The X, which is up in Harrisburg area. It's like the central Pennsylvania rock station. Yeah. And, uh. A couple of alumni from Millersville who are still DJs at, at the X up there were the ones that eventually hired me. Uh, but funny story, going back to B101 a sec, um, the, the program director at the time, Chris Connolly, he, he, he was just like uh, Matthew McConaughey from uh, Dazing and Fuse, the all right, all right, all right guy. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, so he's like, you know what, send me a demo. So I'm like, all right, I send him a demo. And a couple weeks pass, and I was avoiding him like the plague because I don't like I don't take critiques too well. And uh -huh. you know, I'm thinking, oh, he hated it. He thought it was awful. He hasn't even said anything. So it was a Friday afternoon, and I kind of peeked my head in his office. I'm just like, did you by chance get to hear my demo? And he's like, nah, man. But I'll tell you what, go on the air, crack the mic, two to four a.m. this weekend, and da da da. da. And that's, that's that's how it started. I got my first job in Philly radio, having never been heard before. <laughs> so then when I took my demo tape from B101, again, a cassette, yeah. took it up to, drove up to Harrisburg, and I met one of the DJs out at a bar up there, because he was spinning one night, and uh, handed him my cassette, and he basically said to me, well, you got the job. I'm like, really? You, have, you haven't even heard yet? He's like, well, if you're good enough to be on B101, then you're good enough to be on the X. So I got my second job in radio, having never been heard right. before, and then and, and they <laughs> threw me on. Uh, and then I stayed at, at the X for the better part of three years, still living down here. I, li I live in Delco, so still living down here in this area, commuting, I think it was 87 miles each way. This is my uphill barefoot in the snow both yeah, ways yeah. type story. But um, I, I, this is, I was making $6 an hour when gas was over $4 a gallon, and Ooh. I was driving 80 miles each way. You know, so do the math on that, because after after a pay period, I would clear maybe twenty bucks, something like that. But meanwhile, my gas bills are you know two hundred bucks over the course of a couple of weeks. 
Um, but I loved it. I was able to hone my skills even further up mm -hmm. there, not to mention playing the music I love on top of it, which makes it incredibly easier to, sure. to just ad lib and just go with the flow. And it's, it's all stuff that you love and love talking about and love listening to. And essentially what got me in this business to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, and in the meantime, while I was, while I had these radio jobs, obviously they weren't paying the bills. I, you know, part of the time I was still living at home, uh, but I had a day job. I worked, I worked in TV, believe it or not, I worked in TV traffic for a company that's now called U.S. Traffic Network. Um, so basically, if you see the traffic reports on TV, chances are that company is the one that has set up the maps and the cameras and everything, so on and so forth. So um, again, using my degree, which I'm almost done paying for, thankfully, but be it, to be able to use my degree towards my actual profession mm -hmm. is awesome. Both my professions, I guess you can say at that point. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I was sort of kind of helping to pay the bills with having a job down here on top of it. So, you know, I was working crazy hours, long days and weekends and six days, seven days a week. Um, so I actually worked at Y100 for a hot second too, right towards the tail end of their tenure before they, they flipped over. And while Preston and Steve were still over there, I was doing street squad stuff for them. This was back in, man 2004 something like that yeah, yeah. but uh, in the process the company that I worked for the the day jo job that I had uh, Kathy Romano worked there Nick McElwain worked there mm -hmm. uh, Randy Cotts used to work there and uh, Kathy did TV traffic for NBC 10 right, yeah. and she by chance one, it was a Friday afternoon and one day she locked her keys in her car back at her house this her husband or whoever had to drive her out to Malvern where the where this company is and it was again Friday afternoon. And she was getting done her shift, and she's like, "Well, does anybody want to give me a ride home?" And I was like, "Yeah, you know, yep, yeah, sure." And I was still at the X at the time, and of course, Friday afternoon traffic. We had to hop on the Schuylkill, and it's dead stop. Oh, so yeah. it gave me plenty of time to to talk to her and kind of pick her ear, just kind of shoot the breeze with her, which was cool. And then as I was dropping her off at her house, I I was just like, "Well, by chance, you know, there there doesn't happen to be an opening in MMR, is there?" And uh, I had an interview on Monday morning after dropping her <laughs> off on Friday afternoon. And then like two weeks later, uh, I was hired. I was the first outside hire jock at WMMR in the last 15 years when I was hired back in 2006. So I've been at MMR going on 11 years now. It'll be 11 years in April. Wow. So it's, it's been a hell of a ride. And uh, like you said, like I've been kind of floating all over the place when I was the, the head of the, the part-timers. I was just, you know, I got a, little, a few more shifts. Um, but anytime anybody had vacation, anybody, anytime anybody was sick or they had to switch people around, I was always the first to, to take that spot. And it was cool because I wasn't just pigeonholed to a seven to midnight shift or an overnight shift. It's like I, I, I was able to be heard during the day, Pierre, I've covered Pierre Robert. I've covered, you know, Jackson, uh, Preston and Steve on the weekend. So I've been heard at all hours of the day, any day of the week, which is nice. So for the people that might not listen from 7 to midnight, they'll be able to hear me at 10 o'clock in the morning or, or noon or whatever. So, um, you know, the, the response and the reception that I've gotten from all of the listeners uh, over the past month or so since being hired full time to do overnights at WMMR has been just amazing. And, and uh, it, I'm just very fortunate to work for such a legendary, legendary rock station. I mean, you can go anywhere in the country, go to any radio station in the country and mention, you know, our call letters anywhere. And, oh, they, yeah. and they know who we are, they know what we're about, and, and they know what WMMR is. Well, what a journey you've taken. And I think one of the, one of the important things that I'm going to point out to this is that I've met different people who have gone through uh, probably similar classes and stuff that you did. And uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, it didn't work out for me. I didn't get into a media job or media-related job. And I think that, I don't know that too often they, people prepare them for, like, it's going to be rough. And you're, you're not going to walk out. I mean, I know when I went through the school I went to, it was told, like, oh, you're going to be making this much when you get out. And da-da-da. It's like, no. No, 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 no. you got to put the, put the hours in. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's good that you were, you were able to see that and you had such a passion for it. That's led you, led you here, which, yeah, if you're going to be at a radio station, this is the one to be at. I actually got paid more to be the B at B101 than I did to be a DJ at 1057X. I almost got paid <laughs> twice as much to be the B at B101 well, than B I did. It was legendary. And, you know. But still, I'm saying, and again, this was, this was early 2000s, <laughs> so it was, it was a different time. But um, it's one of those businesses, it, it is a sacrifice. 
but at the end, when you start to succeed and, and start to achieve your goals, it, it's it's not a job at all. Like yeah. you know, I can't even believe I get paid to do this. Like you could pay me in concert tickets and CDs, and I'd be a happy guy. You know what I mean? It's, Don't listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you know what though? It's one of those things. Like I said, when I walked into B101, like I was dead set that this was what I was meant to be doing. Yeah. And it's and when you have that kind of mentality for something and towards something, anything's possible. I mean, anything's possible anyway. When people say follow your dreams and, and just keep going for what you want to do, yeah. But the the harder of a job it is and the 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 more far fetched it seems and to be an actor or to be a rock star, you know. Yeah, it's hard. There's a lot of sacrifice and a lot of just awful hours and awful pay if you get paid at all. Like when I was at Y100, I wasn't even getting paid to be there. Like it was just, it was supposed to be like accredited internship, but I was already out of college at that point and already had some on air experience. I'm like, come on in, but we're not going to pay you. So, uh, but you know, I got to go to cool shows and again, yeah. I got to, that's where I met Preston and Steve and, and, and the crew over there and to be a part of. Another legendary station like Y100. Sadly, they're they're no longer longer with us. But you know, they're they're a station that will continue to be echoed uh, when it, when you talk about oh, yeah. Philadelphia radio for yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So you know, because you did mention that uh, when you started in school, you started with older older equipment. Mm -hmm. Okay, that really isn't used that much anymore. How, how have you seen? I don't want to say the transition of radio, okay, because I think that's kind of benign. But uh, how do you think? And uh, since we talked about it a little bit before the interview. Um, how do you think radio has changed to be able to remain still relevant compared to, say, you know, brick and mortar stores went out when digital started coming in, and sure. now, you know, brick and radio stations like this are up against satellite radio, against internet radio, and also against you know stuff like Spotify and, sure. and everything. What do you think makes this still work? Uh, especially for WMMR, we we pride ourselves. You know, since 1968, we're going to be 50 years old next year. Um, same format, same same type music, everything, and we pride ourselves on being live and local 24/7. So right now, as we're doing this interview, even though you're watching this at you know some other point of the day, it's almost two o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday on Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day, T. Happy Sean. Valentine's Day. Uh, <laughs> um, but I was just I was just reading uh, an article, and terrestrial radio still outranks every other media source when it comes to uh, streaming or satellite or any other any other medium when it comes to audio uh, terrestrial radio is still number one mm -hmm. significantly number one and it's weird because like uh, you know initially when uh, the paid TV service came on cable TV yeah. back in the day people were like nobody's gonna pay for this like you know and all of a sudden it came in but you know, terrestrial TV is not going anywhere anytime soon either. It's yeah. like it's it it's free. If you have a radio, you can stream us anywhere. If you have a, a cell phone, you can take us anywhere in the world and, and bring us along. And I think just over the years, we a, a, as DJs and personalities and just in general as a family here at WMMR. Um, welcome anybody in with open arms, and that's one of the coolest things uh, about me as a DJ is that at any given point. Uh, it's, it's it's a call and response. You say something, people react to it. You say something stupid, people are going to tell you. You mispronounce something, people are going to tell you. Um, but, you know, to get calls, I've gotten calls from across the country, across the world, you know, uh, soldiers listening to us over in Afghanistan and Iraq and mm -hmm. people over in Japan and Australia and all over the place. And, and the way that technology has evolved... That's helped us to evolve as well. That we don't really have to change anything here. Obviously, the the types of music that we play and, and stuff like that has changed sure. slightly over the sure. years, along with the times. But you know, for it's weird because a lot of people come up to me and will say, "I, I was on vacation," or "I was uh, over and so and so," and I was just trying to flip through the stations and try and find something comparable to WMMR, and it's just like you can't. And then I'm thinking, like, yeah, sure, all cities have rock stations. They're probably playing the same songs. And I'm sure they're, you know, it's, it's same but different. Yeah. But having traveled the country and having traveled all around, it's just like, you know what? They're right. There, there really isn't, you know, our, our slogan is everything that rocks. And it really is. Because you mm -hmm. could tune in to Jackie Bam Bam and hear 
uh, you know, the <laughs> Scooby-Doo theme or something, and then you, <laughs> you flip over to Pierre, and here he's playing Sinatra, or, you know, he's playing just the oldies and Motown and stuff, and it's yeah. like, you know, granted, some people like that more than others. Some people are just like the diehard Panteras and, you know, stuff like that, and we have that too, but it's we really are everything that rocks. We really have an eclectic not just group of, of DJs and personalities here, but like our tastes in music all vary significantly. And I think we all kind of embody the everything that rocks moniker here yeah. at MMR. And as far as the, the mom and pop shops and the, and the, the mediums and, and media and stuff like that, uh, first of all, vinyl is one of the, the biggest selling mediums at the moment over the past couple of years, if not the biggest, yes, uh, which absolutely. is cool. So a lot of the newer bands are actually releasing their records not only on vinyl, but on colored vinyl and with bonus inserts and stuff that, like yeah. the bands used to do yep. in yesteryear. And I'm a big time collector. I love collecting the old stuff. But I love collecting the new stuff. I'm a, I'm a big time audiophile. I love vinyl. I got record players almost in every floor of my house. And um, you know, one thing that I miss from the bigger box stores like the Best Buys and the Circuit Cities and stuff is every Sunday when that flyer would come out, it, and you'd see all the the CDs and all the albums that are coming out on Tuesday, and I would be one of the first ones there when the new release day, you know, to get to get that stuff. Granted, they've scaled back significantly. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, they used to hold vinyl. They don't do that anymore. They barely have CDs. Most of the stuff is sort of antiquated at that point anyway. Um, but I, you know, the the mom-and-pop record stores, you know, Main Street Music over in Manny Young. You got Grassroots down in Ocean City, New Jersey. That's a favorite of mine. Um, Shady Dog out on, on Lancaster Avenue are all just great stores to go in not like you can find the old stuff you can find the new stuff a lot, a lot of places you can spin you know the stuff before you buy it and just to be able to hold it and look at it and get the gate fold and the liner notes and all that kind of stuff is just is what got me into it in the first place is to be able to open it up and you know see what you got there and hold it in your hands and smell it and all that kind of stuff and it's it's just really really cool so with all that said, and I appreciate vinyl just as much, okay, and obviously I, one of the reasons that I can think the radio continues to be vibrant is because I have had the satellite in the car and everything else like that, but that whole idea that I can, I can walk someplace with a radio somewhere still, okay, and listen. I don't have to worry about, oh, I'm not in the internet, you know, I don't mm -hmm. have internet connectivity or whatever else like that. And I think the other thing, too, is like some of the other music services are just that, they're music services. You don't get that feedback, uh, you know, or, or, or any possibly in some cases. Even the ones that do have, quote, unquote, DJs or on-air personalities, it's not as instantaneous as what sure. I hear when I tune into this radio station at any time, certainly your show or Jackie's show or Preston Steve or anything else like that. So I thought, I thought that was always the key, is like that you're right it still embodies the whole idea of you know everything that rocks but it's also the the people and the personalities that make it up and i think that's what sets it apart and makes it continue to be viable sure so and the call and response is reciprocal between us to the listener yeah. and vice versa because again at two o'clock in the morning you know people are on different schedules for yeah. one reason or another whether they're working or whether they just keep different hours and you know they want to hear something or they just want to talk to somebody a lot of times people are just looking for friends or need you know, just need some help, and and that we're always here. There's always somebody here. There's always somebody to talk to. So how how important do you believe? Okay, because I do. But how do you, how important do you believe radio is to introducing people to new music? It's uh, that's a good question because I I almost look at myself. I don't want to say like a prophet, but I look at myself as as uh, a priest. Uh, preaching the good word of music, the good word of rock. And, um, you know, granted, we, we play the bands that we play now and again, and a lot of these bands come through for MMR concert events, but, sure. you know, they have opening bands that maybe somebody else would want to see, or there's opening bands that uh, I think people should see. So, like, what I do when I'm on the radio, I say and play pretty much what I would want to be listening to if I'm out there listening. And that's sort of been the response that I've gotten from my fans over, over the years is that like, they just love listening to me because you know, the diehard rock fans, they, they turn on the radio cause they want to listen to music. They want to hear about music, you know, they like all this kind of stuff. And, and that's 
what I love and that's why I'm here. Because again, if I wasn't here, mm-hmm. I would be absolutely be on the other side of the, the radio listening and yearning for that new song and, and when are they coming through and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. So um, I, I just think that music is what makes the world go round. You know, music is the soundtrack of our lives. I couldn't tell you how many times, you know, it's flipped on MMR and regardless of the mindset, I mean, I'm just like, holy crap. Like, it's almost like, you knew that, I, like, at this specific time, this song came on, and, and that's the mood I'm in, or that's yeah, the whatever I'm right dealing with. Yeah. Absolutely. And and that's that's probably one of the top reasons why I love doing what I'm doing, because I know it's the music that's touching people, mm-hmm. but I'm the one playing the music mm-hmm. at any given time, and... and um, you know, the response that you get from people, especially when you play like a, like we call it the Oh Wow song. Like when you play something that people haven't heard in a while or, you know, for whatever reason, then all of a sudden you start getting these phone calls and these text messages from people being like, oh, I haven't heard that song in forever. This is great. It takes me back to here. Or, you know, all oh, Spectrum in 77 was up with this, that. You know, granted, I wasn't born at that point yet, but, I, you know, I, I can I can totally relate to with what it is that they're that they're saying so and trying to get the same experience that you have with, with music you heard when you were growing sure. up. Sure. And, again, when I was younger and before I even started to get into radio and, and form my direction, all I was doing was going to concerts. All I was doing was buying CDs. And I got the same thing. That, you know, you've seen all the movies and TV shows from my parents. It's like, when are you going to stop wasting your money on concert tickets? When are you going to stop wasting your money on, on CDs? When are you going to get a real job? Like, all this kind of stuff. So I, I, I razz my mom every now and again because it's just like, not only do I go to every concert, I get paid to go to most of the concerts, and I get the concert tickets for free. You know what I mean? So it's like, if, if there was a way to work the system, I, I have found the way. But, uh, no, I honestly, and you, and you know, Sean, uh, live, living in around Philadelphia here, that we there's just so much to do mm. whether it's the international acts whether it's the local acts re- wh- whatever it is at any given night there's always something going yeah, you on can find and that's yep. what i love about philadelphia and if i wasn't here i would be there you know in a heartbeat cool well brent i want to thank you for taking time to do this yeah i'm gonna let you get back to your job Okay. You don't want to, we, we can stay. I'm, I'm here till five. Well, uh, you know, I'll hang out a little bit. All right, right. On. <laughs> we're we're going to say goodnight to these people. Uh, or goodbye to these people. It's probably going to be daytime by the time they check it out. Yeah, right. uh, But I want to thank you. Uh, Absolutely. Until next time, everybody, uh, tune back in for more Behind the Beyond the Band. So beyond the Band. See more people. Yes. Like, Brent, get the people behind what you're listening to. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it, bud.